Did you know that the queen of smooth jazz once found herself behind bars in a Jamaican jail cell? It's almost impossible to believe such an incident could happen to someone as mysterious and cool as Sade. Beneath her calm, silky voice and timeless elegance, there lies a whirlwind of drama, controversy, and a life full of unexpected twists and turns. Get ready to dive deep into the story of the singer who turned smooth operator into a lifestyle, but not without hitting a few bumps along the way. Early Life and Roots Born on January 16, 1959, in Ibadan, Nigeria, Helen Folasad Adu, known worldwide simply as Sade, has African roots that few might expect. Her father, Adebisi Adu, was a Nigerian economics professor, and her mother, Anne Hayes, was a British nurse. The couple's marriage was rocky, and before Sade turned four, her parents divorced. After the split, Helen moved to England with her mother and older brother, Banji. Despite the difficulties of being one of the few Black families in the small Essex town of Clacton-on-Sea, Sade's childhood was characterized by her quiet, reserved nature and a flair for creativity. Little did anyone know that this shy girl would grow up to become one of the most enigmatic and iconic singers in the world. The path to stardom. In her teenage years, Sade attended St. Martin's School of Art in London, focusing on fashion design. Yes, fashion, not music, was her first love. However, life had other plans. Reflecting on her career, Sade once said, if I wasn't singing, I'm really not too sure what I'd be doing because now I am singing, I can't imagine a life without it. Singing soon became her world and she devoted herself entirely to it. Sade's musical journey began in the early 1980s when she joined a Latin funk band called Pride as a backup singer. Although initially rejected by the band, she was eventually welcomed back when they couldn't find anyone better. Sade's sultry voice and mysterious aura quickly captured the audience's attention, and it wasn't long before she and a few members of Pride decided to break away and form their own band, aptly named Sade. A Star is Born, the band's debut album, Diamond Life, released in 1984, was nothing short of revolutionary. It blended smooth, jazzy, soulful sounds that captivated listeners worldwide. The single Smooth Operator became iconic, and the album sold over 6 million copies, earning Sade her first Brit Award. By the time her second album, Promise, dropped in 1985, Sade was a global sensation. With hits like The Sweetest Taboo and Never As Good As The First Time, she solidified her status as a musical powerhouse. Despite her success, Sada remained a mystery. She rarely gave interviews, avoided the party scene, and focused on her art. Albums like Stronger Than Pride, 1988, Love Deluxe, 1992, and Lover's Rock, 2000, further established her as a musical icon. Each release was an event with fans waiting patiently, sometimes for a decade, because they knew she'd deliver quality. Personal life and challenges. Behind the scenes, Sade's life was not without its challenges. Her brief marriage to Spanish filmmaker Carlos Scola Pliego in 1989 ended in divorce just a few years later. She later found love again with Jamaican music producer Bob Morgan. In 1996, they welcomed a child, Isaac Teo Adu. However, the relationship faced struggles, leading to their eventual breakup. Sade then moved to rural Gloucestershire, England, choosing a quiet life away from the limelight. In 2016, Sade's child came out as transgender, transitioning and adopting the name Isaac Teo Adu. Sade, known for her private nature, offered unwavering support. Though she rarely speaks about her personal life, Isaac publicly thanked her for being his rock during the transition, showing the deep bond between mother and child scandals, and legal troubles. Despite her calm demeanor, Sade found herself in legal trouble in 1997 while living in Jamaica. She was arrested for failing to stop for police after being pulled over for speeding. Rumors suggested that Sade got a little sassy with the officers, which didn't go over well. After a night in jail, she was released on bail, but the incident made headlines. Smooth operator in hot water, Sade, however, 
remained tight-lipped about the ordeal and soon returned to England. The Enigma of Saad. One of the biggest controversies surrounding Sade is her tendency to disappear from the public eye for years at a time. Fans and record executives alike have expressed frustration over the long waits between albums. But for Sade, it's essential to live her life on her terms, reconnect with her roots, and keep in touch with friends and family. She once said, I have my own little time scale. I can't adjust like that. This unwavering commitment to authenticity is part of what makes her so special health, and personal struggles. Over the years, there have been whispers about Sade's health. Reports suggested she struggled with bouts of depression, but she never confirmed these rumors. Those close to her insist she's always been a strong woman who knows how to take care of herself. She has often retreated to the countryside, far from the madness of Hollywood, choosing peace and solitude over the glitz and glamour. The Legacy of Sade so, what has Sade been up to lately? After the release of her last album, Soldier of Love, in 2010, she took a step back from the spotlight. In 2018, she released two new songs for film soundtracks, Flower of the Universe, for Ava DuVernay's A Wrinkle in Time, and The Big Unknown for Widows. These tracks reminded everyone that Sade still has that magic touch. Currently in a long-term relationship with Ian Watts, a former Royal Marine, Sade continues to lead a quiet private life. With an estimated net worth of $70 million, she remains an icon, a vibe, and a mood. Even at 65, she embodies the ultimate definition of cool. While fans continue to hope for new music, Sade has made it clear that she will release work only when she's ready. Until then, we'll be here waiting patiently for the next chapter in the story of the Queen of Smooth Jazz. Adu, who was born to a Nigerian economics professor and an English nurse, was never addressed by people in her community by her English first name, Helen. Her parents began calling her Sade, a shortened form of her Yoruba middle name, Folasad. When she was four years old, her parents separated, and she moved with her mother and younger brother to Essex, England. At age 17, Sade began a three-year program in fashion and design at Central St. Martin's College of Art and Design in London. After graduating, she modeled and worked as a menswear designer. Her foray into music began when she agreed to fill in temporarily as lead singer for Arriva, a funk band that had been put together by her friends. Sade later sang with another funk band, Pride before breaking away with fellow Pride members Stuart Matthewman, Andrew Hale, and Paul Spencer Denman to form the band that would eventually bear her own name. Sade's smooth sound, which defied easy categorization, was exemplified by the songs Your Love is King and Smooth Operator, both tracks from the group's debut album Diamond Life, 1984, which earned Sade and her bandmates a Grammy Award for Best New Artist. A second album, Promise, 1985, enjoyed similar popularity and was followed by a world tour. The album featured the hit song, The Sweetest Taboo, which stayed on the American pop charts for six months. In 1988, Sada embarked on a second world tour to coincide with the release of a third album, Stronger Than Pride. In 1992, Sade released Love Deluxe, which featured the Grammy-winning single, no Ordinary Love. After a subsequent world tour, Sade enjoyed life away from the limelight. She became a mother, while other members of her band recorded separately as Sweetback. The band reunited to produce the critically acclaimed Lover's Rock, 2000, which earned a Grammy for Best Pop Vocal Album. In 2001, Sade embarked on a highly successful world tour, excerpts of which were featured on Lover's Live, 2002. Sade's first album of original material in a decade found the band wrapping new instrumentation and rhythms around the smooth vocals that had defined it since the 1980s. The Grammy-winning title track of Soldier of Love, 2010, incorporated martial beats and harsh guitars, and critics praised the trip-hop and reggae influences that colored Sade's trademark soulful melodies. 
Following another hiatus, Sade contributed the song Flower of the Universe to the film soundtrack for A Wrinkle in Time, 2018. She was appointed Officer of the Order of the British Empire, OBE, in 2002, and promoted to Commander of the Order of the British Empire, CBE, in 2018. February 2010, Soldier of Love is released, the sixth studio album the band Sade have released during their 25-year career and the first since Lover's Rock in 2000. For Sade herself, as the linchpin of the group's songwriting effort, it's a simple matter of integrity and authenticity. I only make records when I feel I have something to say. I'm not interested in releasing music just for the sake of selling something. Saad is not a brand. The call went out in 2008 for the group to reconvene at Peter Gabriel's Real World Studios in the countryside of Southwest England. It was the first time the four principals had met up since the Lover's Rock tour wrapped in 2001. Bassist Paul Spencer Denman decamped from Los Angeles, from where he managed his son's punk band, Orange. Guitarist and saxophone player Stuart Matthewman interrupted his film soundtrack work in New York, and London-based keyboardist Andrew Hale gave up his A&R consultancy. In a series of fortnightly sessions at Real World, Sade sketched out the material for a new album, which they all felt was probably their most ambitious to date. In particular, the sonic layering and martial beats of the title track, Soldier of Love, sounded quite different from anything they had previously recorded. According to Andrew Hale, the big question for all of us at the beginning was, did we still want to do this and could we still get along as friends? The answer soon came back as a passionate affirmative. The album was completed in the summer of 2009, mainly at Real World. The feel of the music this time had moved away from the old country soul styling of Lover's Rock and assumed a more eclectic identity. At times, the band sounded like the original Sade, with Matthew Mann back blowing soft sax on In Another Time and the vocal on Long Hard Road hymning. But with songs such as the joyously quirky reggae chant Baby Father and the dramatically arranged album opener The Moon in the Sky, Sade were exploring new territory. I never want to repeat myself, Sade herself says, and that becomes a more interesting challenge for us the longer we carry on together. Helen Folasade Adu was born in Ibadan, Nigeria. Her father was Nigerian, a university teacher of economics. Her mother was an English nurse. The couple met in London while he was studying at the LSE, and they moved to Nigeria shortly after getting married. When their daughter was born, nobody locally called her by her English name, and a shortened version of Folasade stuck. Then, when she was four, her parents separated, and her mother brought Sade and her elder brother back to England, where they initially lived with their grandparents just outside Colchester, Essex. Sade grew up listening to American soul music, particularly the wave led in the 1970s by artists such as Curtis Mayfield, Donny Hathaway, and Bill Withers. As a teenager, she saw the Jackson 5 at the Rainbow Theater in Finsbury Park, London, where she worked behind the bar at weekends. I was more fascinated by the audience than by anything that was going on on the stage. They'd attracted kids, mothers with children, old people, white, black. I was really moved. That's the audience I've always aimed for. Music was not her first choice as a career. She studied fashion at St. Martin's School of Art in London and only began singing after two old school friends with a fledgling group approached her to help them out with the vocals. Somewhat to her surprise, she found that while the singing made her nervous, she enjoyed writing songs. Two years later, she had overcome her stage fright and was regularly singing back up with a North London Latin funk band called Pride. I used to get on stage with Pride like shaking. I was terrified, but I was determined to try my best and I decided that if I was going to sing, I would sing the way I speak because it's important to be yourself Sade served a long apprenticeship on the road with pride. For three years, from 1981, she and the other seven members of the band toured the UK, often with her driving. Pride's shows featured a segment in which Sade fronted a quartet that played quieter, jazzier numbers. One of these, a song called Smooth Operator, which Sade had co-written herself, 
attracted the attention of record company talent scouts. Soon, everybody wanted to sign her, but not the rest of Pride. Obstinately loyal to her friends in the group, Sade refused to depart. 18 months later, she relented and signed to Epic Records, on condition that she took with her the three bandmates who still comprise the entity known as Sade, saxophonist Stuart Matthewman, keyboard player Andrew Hale, and bassist Paul Spencer Denman. 